Hey all, Alex here at your home of the Music Deep Dive, and today it's time for a review of the 1848 novel by Anne Bronte, The Tenant of Wildfell Hall. This is the second and final novel, tragically, by Anne Bronte. Uh, it was published uh, approximately a year or so before her uh, death of tuberculosis, and if you remember the video I did about Agnes Gray, her first novel, I was not especially a fan of that. I thought it was a bit on the blander side. Um, not as willing to engage with kind of deeper and deeper ideas and ideas that are maybe more relevant in the contemporary sense than what her sisters were doing uh, for Jane Eyre um, from Charlotte, Wuthering Heights from Emily. Um, the Tenant of Wildfell Hall, though, this one I knew had a lot of acclaim kind of surrounding it, so I was very open-minded, and I'm happy to report that I enjoyed this novel substantially more. Uh, it made a much larger impact on me. Uh, it's an interesting piece in the sense that it is written as an epistolary novel, so a novel written in the form of first letters and then um, diary entries, um, first from the main male character, Gilbert Markham, and then by the main female character, uh, Helen Graham. And the thing about this novel, this reminded me actually of Jane Eyre in a lot of ways. Um, I think it comes down to the, I, the, I suppose the attitude that it presents and the kind of critiques and commentary that it levies among um, about like women and um, women's relationship to um, men, I guess, in society um, is very interesting, but it takes a very different approach from Jane Eyre. Jane Eyre's main character is kind of an eccentric. That's kind of the whole point. Um, Wildfell Hall's main female character, Helen, is not necessarily an eccentric. She is a victim. Um, she is the victim of an abusive husband, um, an alcoholic husband, um, who was based heavily on uh, Anne's older brother, Branwell, who died just uh, shortly after this novel was published. And you can tell, based off of how visceral the writing is of the husband in this book, that um, Anne was pouring a lot of her own emotions into this. I mean, this is something that I can give to Anne's credit, both on Agnes Gray and this novel. She is very much pouring her own lived experiences into these books um, in very obvious ways, perhaps more obvious ways than her sister did. Um, and that comes through with the portrayal of alcoholism here. It is very um, frightening, it's very vivid. Um, the husband eventually dies, um, and the depiction of that and how that happens and his kind of you know, struggles, like where he's like almost remorseful for his actions but can't really quite get there. Um, and Helen and how her relationship to him kind of evolved over time. It's just very difficult stuff. And that's what I think raises this novel from just being a general romance to being something that is very, that cuts through, that cuts, um, kind of cuts like a knife at points. Um, that is the bulk of the middle and kind of the end of the novel. I will say the first part of the novel uh, did feel a bit more fluffy. I was getting some kind of, um, I, I guess, not necessarily Agnes Gray vibes, but it was definitely more lightweight, kind of um, naive, I suppose, because we're reading it from Gilbert's perspective, and Gilbert is kind of this um, love-stricken guy. He's in love with Helen and, you know, wants to meet her and understand her and understand her story. And then when the perspective switches and it becomes Helen, that is a really powerful moment because the tone of the novel changes. And that's when I think it goes from being good, in, intriguing, kind of fun, kind of lightweight to being uh, really powerful, really effective. It was interesting to hear some people say that they are not a big fan of Helen as a character. Kind of reminds me of some critiques I've heard about Jane Eyre, actually. Um, Sort of for, and it's one of those things where I understand the uh, people not necessarily liking Jane Eyre. I can understand that being a point of critique because she can be a little bit brash, over the top, uh, make poor decisions. 
I can't really understand it for Helen quite as much. I think it's pretty clear from this narrative that she is a victim. And yes, she complains a lot, but she has damn good reason to. And I, I, I feel sympathy for her. I think she comes out of this looking incredibly strong. And it was, I, I would almost say it's the best written female character that I've seen out of any of the Bronte novels that I've read so far. Um, really well done. Um, I think the writing on here, again, not that Agnes Gray had poor writing by any means. I think that was the clear highlight of the book. But Wildfellow Hall's writing is so evocative, so dark at points, um, so gorgeous, um, especially, again, kind of towards the ending. It's really beautiful stuff and kind of proves that even though Anne is sort of the forgotten Bronte sister just because she doesn't have a novel that today is as relevant as either Jane Eyre or Wuthering Heights are. Um, she was absolutely their equal as far as a, being a prose stylist, um, at least in my opinion. So as far as where I evaluate this novel, to me, I don't know. I mean, Wuthering Heights and Jane Eyre are kind of in rarefied air as far as the novels that I read from this time period. I don't know that Wildfell Hall gets quite there, but it's only a small step below. Uh, there's still a lot of kind of powerful feminist or proto-feminist themes in here that I really love. Um, I think the character depictions and the darkness of the novel are very real, um, not necessarily in the so absurd that it almost seems fantastical realm that Wuthering Heights is. Uh, it seems very grounded, seems very um, rooted in real scenarios, real people, real ideas, and I appreciate that. Uh, about this novel. So give it a read. Strongly recommend this one. Very glad that I checked it out. Um, and I will continue to review the uh, other two Bronte novels um, as I continue here. And then perhaps I will make a ranking video uh, of some sort towards the end. So Tenet of Wildfell Hall, uh, two thumbs up. Highly recommend. And that's it. So thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. As always, more reviews are to come. Tell a friend as well. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time right here at your home of the Music Deep Dive.